Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. I want to install a ham radio in this 2024 Subaru Outback, but I want to take my time, plan it out, and do it right. It's also the middle of winter, so installing a radio in a car like this without a heated garage is kind of a chore that I want to put off until spring. So here's what I decided to go with for now. This is an HT antenna window mount that I found on Amazon. Now, MFJ sells something similar that you can get on the ham supply stores like HRO or DX Engineering. But that option seems like it's a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, and it actually it costs twice as much as this one. Let's take a closer look at what this is. So this version that I bought has an SMA male connector on this end, which will connect up to the female connector that's on my old Kenwood HT. I believe you can get different versions of this antenna mount with different gender connectors on it, but even if you can't, you can use SMA gender changers, which are also available on Amazon. The coax is three meters of RG174, so not the lowest loss stuff in the world, but good enough for this application, I think. Now the mount itself is the SMA female, which is the same as what's on my HT, so that I can use the antenna that came with that HT on this mount. The bracket part of the mount is designed to slip over the side window of your car when it's partially opened, and then the window and the bracket will roll up into the trim and be weather sealed. So there's really not much to the installation. We just drop this over the window, somewhere along it, wherever it's convenient. Now, the one thing I do like about this mount is the fact that the coax sits in this channel that's in the mount so that when the window closes up on the trim, it doesn't pinch the coax. Now with the window closed, this sits in here nice and tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. And it seems pretty well sealed up, so rain and wind and water shouldn't get in here. Now since this is a temporary installation, I'm just gonna run the coax in here someplace where it's convenient and where I or passengers aren't gonna get tangled in it. So for a radio, I'm gonna use my old Kenwood THF6HT. I like this HT because it's nice and small and I can set it either in the cup holder or in the storage cubby that's behind the shifter. And especially when it's not in use, I can disconnect the antenna and throw it in the glove box so it's out of the way. Just for fun, I decided to hook up this Nano VNA and check the SWR plot. As you can see right now, we're getting an SWR somewhere around 2.75 on 146.500. So not the best, but it should work. This antenna, of course, is not adjustable, but if it were, I could probably get it a little better. You can see that as I go a little higher in frequency there, the SWR actually looks pretty decent. I decided I would try another antenna just to see if I got better results on the analyzer, and I'm really not. This is a Nagoya 771, and I had to put an adapter on it so that I could couple the connection to this mount. I'm getting a little bit of glare on the screen here, but hopefully you guys can see the SWR plot, and it's similar to what it looked like with the Kenwood antenna. Now one thing I'd like to try, but I just don't happen to have one on hand right now, is just a plain old quarter wave whip. Basically a 19 inch piece of steel stuck to an SMA connector. I think if I had something like that, it would work fairly well. Obviously not as good as an antenna mounted in the center of the roof, but better than the HT antenna inside the car. So maybe I'll try and homebrew something up with parts I have laying around, or maybe I'll buy something if I can find it available online cheap enough. Now you guys are probably wondering, how well is this thing really gonna work? Well, I'm wondering that too. <laughs> so let's test it out and see. The first repeater I'll try is right down the road, so I'm sure it's gonna work just fine since I can hit it in the yard with the rubber duck on the radio. N1 NUG testing. The next repeater I'll try is somewhere between, I don't know, 12 and 15 miles south of me. It's actually the repeater for the Natchaug Amateur Radio Club, which is one of the clubs I belong to. Let's give it a try and see if it works. N1 NUG testing. We'll try one more time. N1 NUG testing. Okay, so I'm not able to hit that one. This next repeater is in Wilbraham, Massachusetts. If I had to guess, I'd say this is somewhere between 10 and 13 miles or so to my north-northwest. I think this one will work. It usually works pretty good at the house. Let's give it a try. N1 NUG testing. So that one seemed like it worked okay. Let's try another one. This repeater is in Warren, Massachusetts. 
which is probably somewhere between 12 and 15 miles or so to my north northeast now there's some activity on that repeater right now but the repeater strength itself is up around half scale or so so this one's probably usable from right here if i'm in the right spot looks like this repeater is clear now i'm gonna give it a test and see if i can key it up n1 nug testing it's got a really short tail on it but it sounded like i was able to key it up i don't know if you guys heard it oh there it is you guys can hear it now this next repeater is going to be a stretch this is the one that is on top of mount Greylock in far northwestern massachusetts 60 70 air miles or so from here not really sure we'll give it a try just because i know it's got a pretty good footprint but i don't expect to be able to hit it n1 nug testing as expected nothing on that one so based on that test i'd say my radius is somewhere around 10 miles or so which is about what i expected and i think i'll be happy with that at least for a little while all i really want to be able to do is get into my local repeater while I'm kind of driving around town running errands, that kind of a thing. And I think this is going to work for that. Now, I will confess that I actually did try this on a longer trip already. Uh, I'd commute out to the northwest part of Boston once or twice a week to where my office is. I had the radio with me one of those days, and on my way home from work, I was able to hear the Paxton, Massachusetts repeater, which is sort of north of Worcester somewhere, along the Mass Pike, in between the intersection of 495 and 290, kind of near Worcester. I didn't try to key up the repeater or get into it because there was a conversation going on, but the signal was strong and the stations were readable all along that stretch of road. I'll have to try and check into it the next time I'm up that way, but I think it would be actually fairly usable in that stretch of road given the nature of where the repeater is and kind of the terrain around it. So as you saw, this is working and working fairly well for what it is. Now, is it a perfect solution? No, it's kind of a compromised antenna. But for now, I think it's gonna work out just fine for my needs. And maybe it'll work for you too, especially if you've got a car like this that you don't wanna put a permanent antenna on or a work vehicle or a rental vehicle, anything like that. You can use this with now i will of course leave an amazon product link down in the description below i'm a youtuber that's what we do anyway i hope you enjoyed the video 7-3 for now and thanks for watching